part in the USFL. Order your Silver Anniversary magazine at usflonline.com. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the WICR radio, uh, the WICR morning show. I'm your host, Ian Sachs, and uh, I'm here to talk a little NFL. I mean, you know, we had we had a great slate of games yesterday, and uh, let's jump right into it. I have to start off though with my New England Patriots with a huge win. Over the Denver Broncos, 43-21 to yesterday. Just a phenomenal game. Uh, really a lot of fun to watch. And the best part of it was the second quarter. The Patriots outscoring the Broncos 24-0. to And that was certainly the difference maker in the game. I missed the first quarter of the game and then I I turned it on there and it was just wow this is going so well and really uh the the big player that came up clutch in the game was Julian Edelman with that punt return and just he did he he, he did such a good job also had a receiving touchdown and really Edelman that nine nine receptions for 89 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, big numbers yesterday. Nine receptions, 105 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Brady, 33 of 55 for 331 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. But the interception was in this in the second half when the Patriots had already built up a big lead. So it. It didn't prove to be that much of a difference maker, and you, you know, all, all the last few weeks, it's looked like the Patriots and the Broncos are the two best teams in the NF in the AFC, and I think that with with this win, the Patriots certainly made a case that they are the best team in the AFC. You know, I, it it was at home, so you had to take care of your home turf. And a big, a, a big win, as I've said for the for the Patriots, and and really just a very, very important game. And now, now the Patriots pretty have the track to home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs in their hands. Now that both New England and Denver have two losses in so far this season. So and the Patriots, of course, had the tiebreaker winning yesterday. So Patriots went out; they have the one seed. Everyone has to go through Foxborough in order to get to the Super Bowl in the AFC. So certainly a big advantage there. And uh, you know the Patriots now have have a bye week coming up this week, and then they continue this tough stretch of the season. Of course, as I said just had the Broncos yesterday but net but then they have after their bye week they've got four straight weeks of very tough opponents they have c- coming out of the bye week they have Indianapolis on the road then uh, afterwards they have the Detroit Lions at home then they travel to Green Bay and to San Diego this four upcoming four game stretch for New England is going to prove to be very important. I suspect that they'll run through this stretch three and one. I, I'd like to see four and oh, but I think three and one. Um, the Indianapolis game at first the starting off, yes, it's on the road, but the Colts defense really has not looked that good at all and and it's been Andrew Luck that's really carried Indianapolis so far this season so I think that the Patriots have have a lot better uh, team and a more complete team so that game doesn't really scare me too much the following week they have the Detroit Lions at home uh, if that game was in Detroit, that would have me a little more nervous. 
but really being in Foxborough, I'm not I'm not scared at all. Uh, I think the Patriots should definitely take care of that game. But then it's it's the next two games back to back, going to Green Bay and then going to San Diego. I think that that is going to be where the Patriots might have trouble. I think they'll split those games. I don't know which one they're gonna win, but I I think that that's. That's definitely where you might look to if the Patriots are going to trip up sometime the the rest of the season because then after that they've got three division games. They have the Miami Dolphins, so a rematch there. Dolphins beating the Patriots in week one. So, you know, th- that game doesn't really scare me. I think the Patriots will easily get revenge there. Then they have the Jets who I think are – Arguably, one of arguably one of the two worst teams in the NFL uh, with the Oakland Raiders, and really the only reason I have the Raiders there is because they're winless. Otherwise, I think the Raiders are better than the Jets. Um, and then they clo- the Patriots close out the season with Buffalo. They always do, and they always win in a blowout. So that doesn't really scare me there as a Patriots fan. So I I I look to taking. After this bye week, the Patriots winning the next two games with the Colts and the Lions, and then uh, splitting the games with the Packers and the Chargers, taking one, losing one, and then winning out with, with their three matchups against division opponents at the end of the season. So I, w- with the win yesterday, I look to the Patriots to move right ahead and go to 13-3, and three, uh, finish up 13-3. and three for the season now the Broncos I don't know their schedule uh, as as well as the Patriots but really I mean yes it was a big loss but you, you have to look at the opponent so you can't get too nervous if you're a Denver fan I, you were matching up against the Patriots who were one of the top five teams certainly in the NFL so uh, certainly no shame in losing there uh, I think, you know, the, the Broncos are, are, are still going to do very well. I mean, look at last year. They lost to the Patriots in the regular season, and then they went on and, and claimed the one seed in the AFC and, and won the AFC championship representing the conference in the Super Bowl. So I think, you know, no no real worries in Denver, and uh, they, they should be fine moving on. Nothing really too alarming there. That uh, was it was a cause for concern for me. Uh, but speaking of big quarterback matchups, you know the everyone was was making a big to do about Brady versus Manning. Uh, the the sixteenth time they've they've matched up, and now Brady has won eleven out of those sixteen. Um, but speaking of of big quarterback play yesterday. Ben Roethlisberger had a phenomenal game again. Really, if you look at the if you look at the Steelers, they started off kind of slow this year, and a lot of people thought, oh, the Steelers, you know, they they're they're struggling. They're not that good. They lost to the Browns and everything. And then the last few weeks, especially last week and this week, they have just turned it on, turned it up to another level, and it's. It's just been exceptional to watch. Ben Roethlisberger, 25 of 37, 340 yards yesterday, six touchdowns, zero interceptions in Pittsburgh's 43 to 23 win over uh, their big rival Baltimore. Um, I think you know Big Ben is just playing at such a high level right now that I think right now. He might be the best quarterback in the NFL. Just looking at the last few weeks, he's just playing at such a high level that it's it's really scary. Again, in this game, the second quarter proved to be a big swing in the momentum. Baltimore entered the second quarter with a 7-0 lead. Pittsburgh scored 22 of the 25 points in the quarter to lead 22-10 to at the half. And then, uh, you know, really just coasted from there 
to the victory. But um, always a competitive matchup between Baltimore and Pittsburgh, and and really that division is is so stacked. You I, you have everybody there over 500, and um, you know the NF the AFC North is going to be fun to watch coming down the stretch between between you. Yeah, close matchups with with all the teams there and and uh it's it's really going to be entertaining to to see and and really dramatic you know a lot of people didn't think the Steelers would be that good this year uh they thought that this division was was going to be Cincinnati pretty pretty considerably over the other teams and then probably Baltimore would finish second but hey Pittsburgh has been on a roll recently, first with their big win last week over Indianapolis, and then yesterday having a big win over Baltimore. You know, the Steelers are, are here to, to stay this season. Speaking of another team that's here to stay, the Arizona Cardinals, a very underrated team, but they've been putting together one of the best really are a case could be said that they've been the best team this year 7 and 1 and yesterday beating the Dallas Cowboys 28 to 17 you know Bruce Arians you have to give him credit has is a phenomenal coach i i'll admit i was sleeping on the cardinals this year i thought that they would after going ten and six last year, I thought that they would fall back, maybe go about seven and nine this year. But hey, look at what they've done. They're leading the division that has the last two NFC conference champions. And just, you know, that they, they don't they don't have a lot of flashy players. They don't have an exceptional quarterback. Yes, Carson Palmer is good, but Really, would you take Carson Palmer if you had a top five pick in the draft? No, certainly not. Um, uh, he's not an elite quarterback. They, um, you know, they, they don't have a, a a bruising exceptional running back. They they don't they don't really have any top gun players. Like wow. This guy is a major difference as to why they're ha- they're having success this year. It's kind of more just like they have Bruce Arians coaching, and he's just putting them in a position to be successful. And really, it's worked out well. That's all you need. And look at that. They're seven and one, leading the division. If the playoffs started right now, the the path to the Super Bowl through the through the NFC would have to go through Arizona. Just think about that for a minute. The path to the Super Bowl would have to go through Arizona. Just a, a really they have been the surprise team of the year. I thought their 10 and 6 last year was a bit of a fluke, but obviously not um, a, an exceptional job there by by the whole organization led by Bruce Arians. Now, granted, yesterday they did beat a Tony Romo-less Dallas Cowboys, but I don't know if Romo would have made much of a difference in the game. I I still think Arizona would have won that game, and I'm I'm pretty pretty confident in that. But speaking, staying in that division... The San Francisco 49ers fell to the St. Louis Rams 13 to 10. Uh, you know, a lot of people, I, myself included, thought San Francisco was going to be uh, an elite team this year and, and stay in the top five in the NFL. The way they've been playing recently and with this loss to to St. Louis, I, I think... I, you have to be nervous if you're a 49ers fan. You really do. I, I mean, you know, with the emergence of the Cardinals, the the 49ers are just are are. I, I don't want to say this, but they uh, they might have to start p- be point. They might have to be start playing for their lives. Pretty pretty soon, sooner rather than later. I mean, 
you know, it's 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 gonna be a battle to get them into the to the playoffs this year, and I I I know that they didn't expect that. I certainly didn't expect that. I I thought that they might even take the division from the from the Seahawks and and get you know one of the top two seeds, but things have just not been going well for San Francisco so far this season. And really, you could you could make the same case for the Seattle Seahawks, thirty to twenty four winners yesterday over the Oakland Raiders, and really, the defending Super Bowl champions had to beat the Raiders by by six points. They had to hold on for a victory against the Raiders, the winless Raiders. I mean, that would that's like. Ha- having a tough game against the Jets? Come on. I the Raiders you, if you're the defending Super Bowl champion and and you know it's starting this whole dynasty and everything, you should be blowing a team like the Raiders out. I'm sorry, but you know Seattle just ha- has not clicked like they have like they did last year and like a lot of people thought that they would keep it up this year and they have it points this year. Granted, look at their look at their opening night victory over the Packers. They clicked there, but since then, the Raid I mean the Seahawks have just not put it together the way that I would have expected, and you know it's it's a shame because I really thought that they were gonna prove to be an an elite team this year and and. Maybe even starting a, a, a little bit of a dynasty. But uh, anyway, just uh, other other touching on a few other games from from around the league. Uh, sticking with teams near the bottom, as we were talking about with the with the Raiders right there, the Jacksonville Jaguars losing to the Cincinnati Bengals, thirty three to twenty three. Um, you know, this game was close. I think Jacksonville pulled within a field goal late in the game, and it it looked like, wow, okay, Jacksonville might, uh, or uh, moved to, definitely within one score. It might have been a touchdown, excuse me. Um, but really, uh, you know, I, I was like, wow, Jacksonville keeping it close, having a shot to win maybe, but ultimately Cincinnati added another score to, to create some distance there. But um, really, no, no, no real big thoughts in in this game. Uh, but you know, just c- kind of what I expected the uh, the Bengals to win. Uh, the Browns beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers twenty two to seventeen. The Bucks were leading at halftime, but uh, could not come away with the victory as. Uh, Tampa Bay was leading 10-9 at the break. Um, first time all year that they were leading at halftime. So, for for the Bucks fans out there, you know, it, it looked it looked like it would be a, a positive game, but unable to ultimately come away with the victory. Disappointing for Tampa Bay. You know that they they've been in some close games, but just haven't been able to pull them out. Luckily, they do have their one win. The the Browns moving to five and three now, and you know, I was talking earlier about the AFC North, and hey, you know, a lot of people were like, "Oh, the Bengals, of course, and the Ravens are always good. The Steelers have you know the history, and and you can't count them out." And just kind of, oh yeah, then there's the Browns too. Yeah, they'll finish last, but hey, the Browns have have really turned it on this year and have come out and really showed that they can you know put put together a nice stretch and and uh, compete and that that's that's a good thing to see from Cleveland the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Houston Texans 31 to 21 um, you know really not much not much to say there Mark Sanchez uh, coming in clutch and and leading the Eagles to victory after Nick Foles went down with an injury. Um, you know, Sanchez showing that he can get it done. It's it's good to see out of him. 
yeah, after the way things ended in New York, uh, go now going to Philly and and being put put in a in a better situation than he was in New in in New York, and uh, yeah, he's showing that you you have weapons around him, and uh, he he can have success. He, he didn't have that in New York, and you know the, he's he struggled for it. And uh, speaking of New York and their lack of weapons, the Jets, the Jets, oh boy, the Jets lost to the Kansas City Chiefs 24-10. to The Jets also making a quarterback switch, going with Michael Vick here. Um, I, I had ESPN Radio on uh, on my way in today, and they were talking about about the uh, the Jets quarterback change, and they said, new quarterback, same result. That's the headline from the Jets game there. Uh, Kansas City taking care of business. Really nothing nothing more you can read into this game. It, I think it's what everyone expected, and uh, really not much more. The Jets are terrible, and the Chiefs are you know ma- making moves in the AFC West. Speaking of the AFC West, a big surprise, the San Diego Chargers getting shut out by the Miami Dolphins. I'm sure if Armand was here, he'd have to jump on the air and, and uh, proclaim the, the Dolphins now the favorites to win the Super Bowl. Um, don't read that much into it. Just, uh, I'd say, a surprising game here. I don't really know how it happened but hey if you're a Dolphins fan enjoy the victory and see if you can build off of it I don't really think they're going many places this year but you know enjoy the big win and uh, move on to next week as for the Chargers you have to look at it as it's one game and that's really all you can say about it so just Put it, it, it out of your mind and and move on to to bigger and better things in the future. And uh, now the the final game of the day yesterday, the Washington Redskins fall to the Minnesota Vikings, 29 to 26, in RG 3s return. Um, you know, n- nothing really too exciting out of these two teams. Uh, I think the the Vikings now moved to three and five, so you know they they're kind of trying to salvage their season a little bit, do, try to look, trying to look respectable. I don't think they're going too many places with the Packers and the Lions at the top in that division. So uh, the playoffs are would look bleak for Minnesota, but still trying to trying to put together a respectable season. Washington, you know, coming off of their their big win over. Dallas on Monday night uh, couldn't couldn't follow up against the the Vikings, but uh, unfortunate for them. And uh, as their season c- continues to unravel, um, but you know a gr- a great day in the NFL yesterday. Uh, a lot of good games, and uh, we'll we'll see how the week finishes up tonight with the Indianapolis Colts and the New York Giants. A few years ago, that would be the, the big Manning Bowl. Now it's the Manning Luck Bowl. So we'll see which quarterback dominates there. My money's on Andrew Luck. I, I think the, the Colts are a superior team to the New York Giants and, and should win tonight's game. But uh, should be a good one, and, and we'll see what happens there. Anyway, I'll take a quick break. And on the other side of this timeout, I will be joined by Jersey Joe, and we'll break down some college football. Hello, everyone. This is Gregory Kasimis from the Metro Deli in Scarsdale. The Metro Deli has been part of the Westchester community for over 10 years. We always use the freshest and highest quality ingredients for all our dishes 